Hi everyone and welcome to Expressive Photography. I'm Alistair Ben. And um, in today's video, I want to talk to you all about why I am moving from a Nikon 80 to 400 to a Tamron 150 to 600. Um, so that's what we're going to be doing today. But before we dive into that, I just want to dive back into the office for a couple of minutes. Hi everyone, back in the studio here. Uh, one of the things I want to talk to you about today is a new uh, desk light that I have from the guys over at BenQ. Um, it's a bar that clips onto the top of the monitor and you should be able to see that in my iPhone here. Um, I'm now getting, I'm talking to camera there, recording here, uh, so it's all getting a bit complicated. This desk bar, um, I was very skeptical about. Now, the way the studio is just now, it's very bright. I've got two big LED lights that are temperature controllable uh, that reflect off the ceiling to give a quite a bright uh, office space when I'm recording these videos. But when I'm actually working, I'm doing one of two things. I'm either writing um, where I have the lights quite low uh, because I, I don't like working in a bright room, basically. I do have a window there. Um, but I... I'm either writing and listening to music or I'm uh, processing images. Now, you can't see, I'll, I'll show you here um, on the video, on the iPhone here. I have a dual monitor set up here. So you can see on the left monitor there, I have an iMac Pro and on the right monitor here, I have an ISO. Uh, now I do the vast majority of my color work on the ISO here. It's beautifully temperature controlled. It's the same monitor that Marcel Van Oosten uses, quite a few of my friends use, uh, and it is a fabulous monitor. So I was always trying to find the perfect lighting in my office. I don't want it too bright, I don't want it too dark, but temperature control is very, very important because as we all know, when you have a color calibrated monitor, the, the room changes uh, from day to day, time of day, how much light you've got on, etc. So what I've got now is uh, the guys at BenQ reached out to me and offered me a go of this bar. And I've been using it now for about three months because uh, I wanted to really believe in it before I uh, started talking to anybody else about it. And I have to say, I'm super, super in love with it. Now, I'm going to have to stand up here and there's a little controller, which is this thing so you can see that in the in the video there but it's not got a very long cable looking through the iphone monitor here this is a perfectly neutral um, desktop for my uh, monitor now this little controller here it's got a dial in the middle and it's got um, a, an adjustment button and a change button here you can of course change the temperature manually and you can see if I warm it, it changes and if I cool it, it changes. So you can adjust it manually or there is an auto adjust function. That auto adjust function takes in the ambient light and changes your desk light so that it's completely neutral. I can press this switch on the right hand side and that changes it to luminosity and I can then use my adjustment button and it will do the same thing. It will change the, the brightness to fit the ambient lighting. Now, obviously without all the studio lights on, uh, that uh, video camera that I'm talking into in front of me is gonna be in a very dark room, but I'll just turn off the ambient lighting to show you the effects of the brightness. So this is more or less now the brightness of the room that I would work in. And you can see that I do have another light at the back there, which is throwing up a bit of light onto the, the back curtain there. But if I... That's turning the light off and on, and that's the auto adjust, and then the temperature adjustment so you can see the screen there always remains beautifully neutral. It's absolutely perfectly neutral. Um, and I really love that when I'm processing to just have a desk light that is illuminating my work surface and I can see my keyboard below me and all of that type of stuff. Having a light that illuminates my work surface doesn't interfere with the color uh, integrity of my monitor um, and 
adjusts itself for temperature and brightness is is perfect. Uh, they're not dreadfully expensive, no more so than a decent office light anyway. Um, and I'm absolutely in love with it. So I'm, I'm really thankful to the guys over at BenQ for sending it over. Um, there's an affiliate link down below uh, so if you do uh, purchase one, I will get a very small uh, commission from them for that. Now, Expressive Photography Channel has always been about the philosophy of creativity and how to express ourselves and how to make photography more intuitive rather than uh, doing things by a bunch of rules and so forth. And it's never really been about gear. And But at the same time, we use gear all the time, the gear we use is important and I think it is worthwhile to every now and then do a gear video because it's a fundamental part of our craft just the same as guitars are part of my guitar playing or paints and brushes and canvases are part of a painter's work. So the gear we use is important. Now this 80-400 to has been on my camera for about six years now um, and it's been the workhorse. It's all of my Gobi photographs were made with it um, and as I've become a more intimate and small scenes type photographer I've been using the business end of the 80-400 to more than the wide end, uh, the 80mm end. Uh, the only other uh, lens I use is a 2470 or my Laowa Prime 12mm. Um, so this extended zoom range has really been a real workhorse for me. Now, um, just before people think that I've got way too much gear, this is now being used by Anne Christine. She didn't have a, a long lens, so this is now her body and her lens and her tripod. This is mine, so this isn't all mine. Um, now the 80-400 to is an amazing piece of kit. It's tack sharp, the VR works amazingly, and at the long end I've never suffered from softness or uh, edges getting too dark or anything like that. Now I've had amazing reports of the Tamron, so let's just jump over onto that side. I have had experience of this lens in the past. Um, a friend of mine who came on a Gobi trip two or three years ago was using one and it was a great performer. And a really good friend of mine, Chris Almarini, who's on the membership channel, he used this one for his bird photography. And I was very, very impressed recently with the bird photos that he was posting from his trip down in Texas there. And it's kind of given me the confidence to jump in. Uh, I. I'll accept that over the years I've been a little bit of a gear snob. You know, I've, I've always wanted to buy, you know, Nikon or, you know, I've got Arca Swiss, I've got Gitso. You know, I tend to, I've always tended to use very good gear. Um, and I know that historically Tamron was looked on as a bit of a, a cheaper option. Uh, it wasn't quite as premium as the Nikon lenses. Um, and it's the same with Sigma. I use, I, I do have a, a 50mm uh, 1.4 art, Sigma art lens, and it's amazing. So these non-big name lenses, Nikon, Canon, etc., now have come a huge way. Now, there's a few differences with this one, and that's made me have to make some changes. This is a 77mm uh, objective lens. Uh, so it's accepted my case uh, K9 filter holder, just the same as my 2470, exactly the same uh, filter thread as the 2470. This guy has a 95 millimeter thread. The barrel is actually, it feels a little bit narrower than this. The barrel feels a bit chunkier on the 80 to 400. This feels slimmer, but it spreads out quite a lot at the front there. By the time we zoom in, to the business end, you can see there that the front comes out the same as it does on the 80 to 400. And lengthwise, it is yay longer. <laughs> but the front element is important. And what that's made me do is I've had to uh, get onto my friends at Case and I've actually bought from them um, the magnetic system, the, the Wolverine uh, magnetic filters. So I now have a 95 mil magnetic front which I can use a CPL and I've got a 3, 6 and a 10 stop ND filter. So I can use this for exactly what I've been using this for. Seascapes, uh, forest photography and having a polarizer on the front of that is going to basically give me 
600 millimeters of focal length, which is 200 more than this, um, I'm losing 80 to 150. I can live with that. Um, but I'm getting the business end. I have actually also bought a little 1.4 times adapter. Uh, so I'll get another 40% on top of that. And I think the maximum aperture will drop to about f8. Uh, so, you know, it, it's not going to be the super fastest kit unless it's a nice bright sunny day. But um, that will give me 840 millimeters at the long end. I have been getting back into looking at birds in a big way and having 600 mil to photograph birds if the opportunity arises is still something I'm interested in doing. So this isn't just going to be a, a landscape lens. It is also going to double up as a wildlife or a bird lens. 400 mil was, it's, you had to be quite close to birds to get good photos with, with this. Um, but this is the new workhorse. Uh, and Christine is... Uh, going to be going out in the field with this so she's uh, she's very happy that she's going to have this um, and I'm going to be putting this to its paces now we are going away uh, in a couple of weeks time and we are going somewhere that this is going to prove very very useful so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it through its paces I'm going to take a bunch of photographs and maybe sometime in October in fact not maybe definitely sometime in October I will start I'll do a video for you guys looking at the quality, we'll pixel peep, we'll dive into all the corners, we'll look at distortion and chromatic aberration and all those wonderful things that people care about with cameras and lenses. Um, and we'll do a proper review of the thing. But for today, I just wanted to introduce this um, and the new case filter system uh, to you and explaining a bit of the rationale why I'm, I've, I've made the, the jump. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll get back to you in a month's time to see how it has fared um, and we can decide if it's all been worthwhile or not. This is the little holder that the case filters come in. Um, they, they make really nice kit. It's a nice little leather case. Um, it's a case case in fact. Uh, and in there there's a CPL and a 3, 6 and a 10 stop ND. And of course with any magnetic system it's just the simple case of taking off the magnetic lens cap, sticking on the ND filter, and that's now a 10 stop ND filter stuck in the front of a 600 mil lens. So it is um, a system that is very convenient. And I did a review of these not too long ago. I did a comparison between the Case uh, Magnetics and the Case K9, which is the one I used to use, uh, well, I still use on my wide angled lens. Um, so if you want to check that video out, I'll stick a link uh, in the description below and you can check out that video if you're interested in the specifics of this case filter. Um, there is also an affiliate link there if you want to dive into that as well. But uh, yeah, that's, that's the filter system. Well, thank you very much for watching this short video today. Uh, like I said when I was out in the garden there, gear is just a fundamental part of... Um, our lives these days, the computers we use, the mics we use, the keyboards, the mice, the audio interfaces, the guitars, all of these things are tools of our trade. Um, and uh, I think every once in a while it's worthwhile to just talk about some of the gear that I use personally with a degree of confidence. Um, we do tend to rely somewhat on the the word or opinions of people who we trust and hopefully through the the years of watching expressive photography you feel that you can trust my opinion on these things um yes we get small amounts of affiliate commission very occasionally for anyone that buys this stuff but at the end of the day um, i'm just wanting to share my experience of some of this gear as usual hit the old thumbs up tomorrow regular service will resume and you'll actually find me out in the landscape. Um, I spent a couple of days on some deserted offshore islands with my brother last week and I took along my camera and I was pleasantly surprised by what I found. So join me tomorrow uh, to see the images that I made when I went exploring offshore islands on the west coast of Scotland. Cheers for now. Thanks very much. Check out the links below for more information. Bye. Mm -hmm.